Right, hello, welcome back. Um, we're still doing bits on the Bonneville, um, on my Bonnie. Um, the tank is uh, well, we're about a week into having it on there now, I think. Um, I've kind of lost track uh, in real time and the times I've been putting videos up. Um, but yeah, still loving it. Still staying the satin and the uh, cranberry, um, or claret. Uh, so yeah, keeping that, really liking it. Um, so I thought I'd move on to the the side mount and the, the rear mudguard and with everything that I'm kind of planning at the moment it seems to be completely changing from what I thought I was going to do uh, which is pretty cool, I like that um, and it's just quite nice to sort of not have a plan or have a rough idea and then see where it goes um, but yeah, the old mudguard which I showed months and months and months back probably I think which I kind of got on a whim and just thought I might incorporate that uh, that was going to go satin and go on there and just have that smooth and nothing on there and then just a side mount and a rear brake light on the side mount. Um, and uh, Friday just gone, got home from work and I had a little bit of a play around, a little started doing a little bit of a mock up so I can start ordering the bits that I need like indicator lights or connectors and whatnot. Um, and yeah, just completely changed my mind, just completely gone on a different tangent. Um, so I filmed a few bits there and then, so I'm going to try and edit all this together and splice it in. Right then, little impromptu video while I'm outside. Um, it's Friday and I've just got home for work and I thought I'd just have a play around with um, the side mount and the rear mudguard. And as seems to be the trend at the moment, um, all the initial plans are going completely out the window. Um, I had gone on about the bobbed guard on the back. Um, I've tried a different, few different, well, two different places where I was going to put the side mount, and I've actually changed uh, pretty much what I thought I was going to do. Um, I'll show you some of the pictures. I took a few photos for me to have a look at, and just uh, you know do some beard scratching. Um, but I actually don't think I want the rear mud guard on there at all now. In fact, without the light and the number plate on the back there, I just want that. Just the seats sticking out looks I like it anyway it looks pretty cool so um, yeah let me show you well I'll get out of the way so I quite like that profile a bit less is more so um, yeah so nothing here and then we've got the side mount here Now the plan was then to have the rear light on the side main, so I've got a, I'd get a rear stop light that's got a number plate light on it and just have that on there. Um, I'm actually thinking I might not do that even. I might um, let's take you round and show you. So yeah, view from the rear. Um, yeah, I just really like this open space on the back there. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing having the number plate on there and I'll get just the two number plate lights I'm thinking of putting that little LED light um, in fact let me turn off I'll go and get it now and just offer it up all right then back again so here we go this little one um, which I got for the SR250 and uh, haven't done anything with but a little bracket or something just under there I think would make for a very discreet nice little light um, yeah, completely forgot about that. And of course, I, I didn't use this because it didn't have a number plate light, um, but that doesn't matter, obviously, because it's nowhere near a number plate. So, um, yeah, I think that might work. Um, I've got plenty of sort of points where I could make a bracket. Um, so, yeah. And of course, the alternative is I could just keep this existing tail tidy on, cut along there and leave that light as is but um, I'm not actually overly keen on it um, I rather preferred that smaller one less kind of obvious so yeah and I get to make another under um, 
a fender eliminator thing. That'd be a bit more fun, a bit more handmade stuff on here. Um, I tried two different positions to where I was going to put the uh, the side mount, and um, one was off the rear pillion peg hanger. Um, that's just a little further forward, and I thought that might be a little bit different, um, or off the bottom of the rear shock. And not sure. I'm, I it's kind of easier to put it on the bottom of the rear shock. I quite like it there. I didn't mind it. I it looked pretty cool further up. I had it at quite an angle. I followed the line of the pillion hanger. Um, I'd probably actually have it a little bit more like that. Uh, the only trouble is when I was moving the bike around, or if you're sat on the bike and you're paddling around a little bit, it being a bit closer to your leg, um, you, I, I found I was ca catching my leg a little bit. So I think it's probably going to go on the rear shock because otherwise that's just going to annoy me. The tank pads, um, I'll also throw this up as well. I did this the other night. Um, the other tank, I started debadging, taking the knee pads off just to see what was on there. And um, yeah, so I've got the got the knee pads off so all I've got to do I am going to put these on the new tank um, I'm just doing still just looking around really I haven't really had time to have a proper look but just to see what adhesive products that are there I want something that's going to be fuel and fairly weather fuel resistant and fairly weatherproof you know um, don't want them falling off um, I'm not I'm even bothered looking at see what Triumph actually use I'm sure the info's out there on the net but um, I have yet to a moment to sit down and have a look so that that will hopefully happen fairly soon but they are going to be going on the new tank and my good mate Greg uh, what a top bloke he is sending me another spare set so whatever happens to the um, original black tank um, that will have knee pads I just like knee pads on bonnie tanks at the moment uh, so it's just a just a cosmetic preference thing yeah I thought I was going to use this and uh, I don't think I am now. I quite like the really stripped down kind of a look to it. So, uh, so there we go. So that probably gives you an idea of where I'm going to go now with this. Um, I it's uh, bank holiday Monday at the moment. So tonight, after I've come in from a ride, I'm gonna well, I need to have a look through my toolbox in a minute, see what connectors and stuff I've got because I plan on. This is an original, my original Bonnie wiring harness or the rear light harness bit. And I'm going to bastardise this, use this to make a complete plug-in and play connector block for uh, the rear light, number plate lights and the indicators. Very, very simple, that can just play, plug into the main harness and um, I'll be able to trim this down, of course I probably won't need this much. Um, but all the indicators will, will go into one block and, uh, and the number plate lights, but I'll, I'll show you all that when it comes. So that's something for me to be looking at. Um, I've ordered the number plate lights, so they should hopefully come in the next few days. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So I'll now just finish off the video with a little bit of my um, fun and games with the other Bonnie tanks. So I'll try and the pressure's not really on to do that one. Um, I want to get most of this bike done, as I said, for the Ace uh, uh, Idiot Collective meet. The next one um, be nice to have it all done. Um, so it's not, not an awful lot to do, um, just finding the time. Um, the tank, the other tank is probably going to be a bit of a slow burner, back burner uh, project. Um, we'll just see what happens with that I think. Um, but yeah, I'll keep that kind of going when I've got a few spare minutes or nothing to do. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of it. So hopefully the next video will be all the bits I need together and then um, doing the actual installing. Thanks for watching, take it easy, see you next time. Okay, uh, we're in the spare bedroom, not in the shed, um, as is pretty obvious, and uh, the reason why will become apparent in a moment. But we're gonna have some fun and games with the, uh, the original Triumph tank. Um, I think what I wanna try and do is, um, I'm curious to see how easily the, um, tank badge and the knee pads come off. Good friend Greg is sorting me out another set of knee pads, um, which is fantastic. Um, because I think I think I like the tanks with knee pads. That's what I've decided. So I kind of need another set for, um, for the satin tank and then for whatever happens with this tank. 
Um, but I am, just for shits and giggles, quite interested in uh, seeing uh, what it's like to get these off and working out what I probably could use as a suitable adhesive to put them back on. Um, this is a fuel injected tank, so it's got the plastic tank badges that are just stuck on rather than the um, old carb model ones which were metal and screwed on. Um, so, yeah, not quite as easy to interchange, but um, let's have a go. Um, and the reason I'm in here is because this is where Mrs. Cactus does her makeup and has all her beauty products and stuff like that, which means there's a hairdryer in here. So, um, I'm going to just gently warm up. Uh, the, the glue and um, see if I can pull these off without doing any damage. Okay, so it's been warming for about two minutes. I was just blowing that over there. I've just got a little plastic ruler at the moment um, because it's not going to scratch anything and just gently just move that behind here because I haven't got any fingernails so I can't get sort of get it started. But this is just slid in behind there quite nicely so let's see there we are look at that now this is kind of interesting i don't know oh, it's like a almost like like almost like a latexy silicony kind of adhesive now this feels different to what i had to clean off the satin tank that was much stickier and gooier i don't know it certainly wasn't red it was black in color so i'm not sure if this was the original stuff that they used to stick these on or some other product i'd like to know what it is though okay so i'm just filming i've got both the pads off but i'm now just filming getting the the side badges off and these are a lot trickier I've been um, heating them up uh, a lot longer with the hairdryer and then that there is a sliver of a, a milk carton which I was just able to slide under here obviously this hasn't got as it's fairly rigid plastic and um, I don't want to try and pull it and crack it and um, it's not as easy to kind of roll and peel off as a rubber tank pad so um, and this does seem to be stuck on an awful lot more uh, strongler, strongly, strongly. There we go. That looks like uh, it's actually f sort of foam backed on that one. Interesting. Hmm. Almost looks like a. I don't know. It's almost like a silicon. But, um, obviously it's going to be a, a fuel resistant silicon because I know for a fact that's had loads of petrol on it it hasn't seemed to have eaten away interesting, very interesting so uh, there we go, one debadged Bonneville tank um, there's uh, still a little bit of residue stickiness on there um, it's probably a bit of uh, nail varnish remover although at work I've got loads of IPA not the beer unfortunately but um, isopro and all whatever that is um, but that cleans shit up pretty good so um, if I was trying to clean it up and keep it as is then um, I could use that but um, as it happens this is getting stripped there are can you start picking up can you see those little just the pinprick dots, so a few blemishes in the paintwork. Um, I mean the, the main bulk of it that you see is okay. I had a few little chips there that I was on about. Those two there. You see those? Um, and then on this side, that's just sticky stuff, but that is actually top layer of paint off there. That's actually pulled it off. So I don't know, that's probably because maybe this is some sort of different adhesive used for these. I honestly don't know. Um, it is almost like a masticky type kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I've got no idea what these come with from Triumph. Um, and yeah, so there we go. Um, so I think the next thing is we'll get probably get this um, Nitromorsten stripped. Okay then, so just a bit of a... 
a bit of a talky talky video really this one, I do apologise. I'll wrap it up now, or we'll finish on just slapping some nitromorse on uh, the tank and then covering that over and letting that go. Um, also wanted to point out, big thanks to Mark um, for doing me a Johnny Cactus poster. It's awesome, so that has now a pride of place in the Cactus Cave. Um, but yeah, um, really appreciate it mate, thank you ever so much. So. Let's just get the nitro morse on and wrap this one up and then hopefully the next video I should have all the bits and pieces ready to change the side mount and the rear end on that beastie. But um, yeah, here we go. I actually, um, sorry, <coughs> just come up here. That, um, <laughs> as dodgy as that looks, um, I'll just pick this stuff up. Um, it's TX10 paint stripper. I don't know, it was, it was uh, half the price of nitro morse in the car parts shop. So um, I thought I'd give this a go. So uh, the tank is there. I'll daub it all on and um, probably wrap it in a bin bag. Um, keep the uh, the air from drying it out, and um, yeah, we'll have a little look, see how um, my cat dish of spunk works. So there we go. I mean, that really does look like. The closing scene of a gentleman's relaxation movie, doesn't it? Don't know what this stuff's going to be like, but um, I'll wrap it in a bin bag and we'll see. It's all fun and games. So there we go. We'll call that video done. And then um, hopefully by the time I uh, uh, do the next video, all the bits and bobs will have arrived to uh, sort out what I'm going to do with this. But um, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.